West Tigers fans, our boys head to the eighth wonder of the world, Leichhardt Oval, this Saturday night. We can't wait to get out there as they take on the Sharks. And we have a young, I guess he's fairly in, his, fairly young, in his peak, in Justin Owen to make his West Tigers debut. And we're previewing that game tonight on the West Life Podcast. <laughs> Welcome in to another episode of the West Life Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett. We are presented by Holman Barnes Group, the best place. Uh, I'm sure that I might be saying the second best place to watch the game uh, this weekend. If you're not heading to Leichhardt Oval, you can watch it on the big screen at West Ashfield or even head there after the game. It's probably not a bad idea. You get a late night pizza. Their pizza, uh, I believe they had kept the restaurant open fairly late or you get a feed uh, in the Chinese restaurant as well, just quietly. So if the Tigers get a win, celebrate it. Uh, our friends at West Ashfield at Westlife Pod, Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Please give us a follow if you're on those socials and in the profile of those, you'll find the link tree link or go to westtigers.com.au if you want to find all of our staff, including our Patreon uh, page, patreon.com forward slash Westlife. If you'd like to support the show, join the Discord, which has been yeah, on fire, as we mentioned, on Monday night's show as well. Love all our uh, boys and girls in the Patreon Discord and all our Patreon members who support us. And shouts to everyone joining us tonight on the YouTube channel live. If you don't know, if you listen to this audio only, we go live Monday and Wednesday nights at 8.30. So find at Westlife Pod on Instagram, uh, not Instagram, sorry, YouTube. Give us a sub subscribe and turn notifications on. You'll know when we go live. Join us in the fun. Um, in the jo Join all the regulars in the comments. See, Brocker is in there. We've got Cookie12, Emmanuel, F, Chris, Carl's Beak, uh, Mick Fitz, Kim Ranger, plenty of uh, Shane Cullet, one of our Benji Marshall T Patreon members as well. Lance uh, Koshkin, guys, some tough names tonight. Lance Koshkin, Koshkin. Uh, I'm sorry, Lance, if I mispronounced. You're not the first person I've mispronounced their name, so apologies if I didn't say that correctly. But lots of you tuning in tonight as we look forward to getting out to Leichhardt Oval this Saturday night. And I can't wait to see the boys, including this man, coming in from the Red Room tonight. Mr. Bashara, how are you? Excellent, Josh. How are you? How are you, Aaron? Everyone out there, uh, back at our spiritual home this Saturday night, 7.30 uh, looking forward to it. Hope the boys are all fired up and uh, ready to go and and put on a much you know better start at least than what we had in Canberra. Yeah, I mentioned it on Monday's show, but it's the first I it's the first year because obviously we played our trial in Mudgee and New Zealand, so I didn't get to a trial. I normally I'm trying to think the last last year we definitely went to Belmore. The year before that, I think we played at Leichhardt Oval against Manly, always saw a trial pre-game in the past. We usually play, there's a lot of Sharks at Campbelltown trials as well. So I haven't actually seen West Tigers footy since it was Manly. I didn't go to the Manly game. So probably the Dolphins win at Combank. So it's been a while since I've seen West Tigers footy. And I know they haven't given us much to cheer about, but look, I know we'll do tipping later on. But I don't know, I'm feeling... Feeling, I don't, I don't want to say confident, but hopeful. Hopeful is probably the right word. Heading out to Leichhardt Oval. The Leichhardt, I know the Leichhardt Oval factor hasn't been what it normally is. It is you know, still only the only ground the West Tigers have won more than 50% of, of their games at. It's getting close to, I think, mathematically dipping under 50%. But I don't know. Hopefully a big crowd. Get your tickets. Speaking of which, oh, we're going to go, I almost forgot. The TV star tonight, Mr. Aaron Thompson, who, if you were watching Channel 7 before you jumped on our stream tonight, uh, he was on the 1% Club. How'd you go, Az? Did you win? 
G'day, Josh. G'day, Rob. G'day, everyone listening. Unfortunately, no, I didn't win. I'm feeling a little okay. glum right now because I uh, just had to relive the question that I got eliminated on. And what made it even slightly more disappointing was the fact that if I had gotten that question right, which in my head I did, I just typed the wrong number, I then went and proceeded to get every other question right for the rest of the show, including the 1% question, which means I would have made it to the end. I would have mm. potentially won big, although knowing me, I'd probably, I might have dipped out at the, um, <laughs> might have dipped out with the five the 5,000 because only one other person made it there. And wow. I don't know, it was, it was just a little bit of a bummer, but uh mm. Yeah, I got. I was on TV. You got to see my ugly mug on TV a few times. Um, the the whole plan though was to try to make it as far as I could because eventually I knew that um, Jim would have to have a chat to me if I had made it, if I made it far enough because yeah. I went as a reserve, knowing that there was a very low chance that I'd make it at all. And I got on the show, and yeah, it was it it was a fun night though. As a Jim Jeffries fanboy myself, that uh, would have been very jealous if you actually got to <laughs> have, have a chat to him. Could have mentioned the North Sydney Bears or something. He's one of the key uh, funders of the North Sydney Bears campaign, being, I believe he grew up in St. Ives or Taramara or something. He's a North Sydney Bears fan, and his dad, I believe, is a big Manly fan. So he loves his rugby league Um Jim Jeffries. I would, have, and... I would have also given this podcast a plug. <laughs> mm. Actually, just mate, quietly. Dis- disappointed he's... you didn't wear the shirt, mate. Disappointed you did, didn't wear the Western <laughs> Plot shirt. They don't, they, if you go on TV, they don't let you promote. You're not allowed to wear like brand names or anything when you go on TV, so they okay. wouldn't let you. That's why you never see – whenever you watch a game show, there's never anyone with Nike or anything on – they literally make you um, do blank. Like You can't have literally any wording – on your yeah. um on your clothing so because it's free advertising and there might be i guess if you were in a nike shirt and they're trying to sell an adidas ad on the show then it kind of yeah it's all all about the uh advertising dollars and that sort of thing but um but yeah just quietly jim jeffrey's podcast i don't know uh i don't know about that this week it's about so every week they have a different topic to discuss and it's about uh, the first female pilot, um, Amelia, is it Earnhardt or something? No, Earnhardt. Earhart. Not, Earhart, not Dale Earnhardt, the uh, NASCAR driver. <laughs> Amelia Earnhardt, and like it's it's a lot. They do like a live show, and it's just hilarious. And he knows nothing about the topic, and he just goes on tangents and stuff about. It's hilarious. If you want to laugh, check it out after you watch this show tonight on YouTube. Check it out. The uh, I don't know about that podcast free plug for jim there also a shout out to our friends at west ashfield so a couple of things they have a stand at leichhardt oval this weekend so keep an eye out for them and they um they were in free membership for west ashfield and obviously holland barnes group so it's a uh group wide membership and you can win Go on, a, go on a draw to win a signed West Tigers jersey and other merchandise. They've got the photo up on the screen if you're watching the video version of the show as you did just that that at uh, a core state. Is it last year or the year before that we did this? That last you did year. spun the wheel last year and you won a $20 dining voucher for uh, for West Ashfield in doing so. And uh, what game was that? Do you remember what game? Was it the Rabbitohs at ANZ? Um. Yeah, I think it was a so. I think we, yeah, we sat next to Brocker watching the Rabbitohs from memory. Um, but yeah, head out to West Ashfield. They're also giving so we've got not one but two uh friends of the shows giving away tickets tonight. So here is uh the promotion for West Ashfield is a little video here. Win tickets for our first home game this season. What's West Tigers versus Sharks this Saturday night, March twenty third at Lycardo? Enter, simply like this post and tag two friends you take with you. Winners will be announced this Friday at 11.30 a.m. across our social media. Good luck! Beautiful, nice little... Uh, Instagram post. So head to West Ashfield at West Ashfield on Instagram. There's a post that sounds. If you're listening to this on audio, just look for the uh, the video of the team members in front of the TVs with the footies. 
doing their little bit there. Um, they just explained it then. You've got to tag two people and like and subscribe to the Instagram. I believe that's how you win. And they're giving it, yeah, so they're giving away tickets to the game on Saturday. And also, if you, after you head to there, head to Shane's, uh, our friend, friends at MG Pump Solutions. So MG underscore pump underscore solutions on Instagram. Big Shane, he's giving away uh, three double passes to this weekend's game at Leichhardt Oval. So, um, yeah, he's the corner post sponsor. So take a photo of the corner post if you're at the game this weekend. Tag us in it as well. That's this is not how you enter, but we're just uh, yeah. If you see the MG Pumps corner post, take a photo, tag us on Instagram. We'll share it as well. But head to MG Pump Solutions on Instagram and uh, yeah, like and tag uh, people in the post that has our logo and the West Tigers logo on it. And we'll I believe they're going to randomly select. Um, a few people on Friday as well. To so, man, if you don't get a free, um, free double pass to the footy this weekend, then um, yeah, you're not trying. So plenty of opportunities there. Righto, on to the news. So um, a good little signing or re-signing. Actually, I don't think it's actually official. They're saying this story is about the West Tigers moving. Uh, Basically, saying West Tigers power brokers have moved to secure one of the hottest league prospects in the country in a bid to start stave off uh, not only rival clubs but rugby union. So they've re-signed West Tigers Magpies Harold Matts star. Uh, as I know, you're on mute at the moment. You might need to help me. He must see Massini. I might have went to Italian then and not. Um, Pacific Islander enough. Do I say that correctly? Someone in the comments no, might correct you. me as well. I I think it's Hamasi Makasini. Makasini. I was close. Yeah, you made it sound um, Japanese, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Makasini. Uh, yeah, so big talent, uh, out, big, strong uh, outside uh, center. No, outside center. Well, I mean, if you play this rape union, he might be an outside center. Uh, yeah, so good, good re-signing for the club. Apparently, this kid, I'm sure, yeah, anyone who watched the lower grades, he's an absolute talent. So the West Tigers hopefully going to lock him in. All these young kids, we're signing on. So if only we had a time machine, I could move forward a season or two because the West Tigers, well, they'll be a force. I'm sure we're the next Panthers. We're just going to look. It took their their three year plan took what eight years or something. So who knows? Maybe the West Tigers will um, be the next pa- the Penrith Panthers of the twenty. Well, hopefully not twenty thirties. The late twenty twenties. So see see how we go. Uh, another story that came. Yeah, not really much, but I don't know if you, if you've been reading the papers or watching the rugby league shows and that sort of thing. The whole thing about Benji Marshall. And he's not not a full time coach, and he spends time with family. And then the media had a crack at him, so they talked about it on NRL three hundred and sixty last night. I'll play a little clip of Kent Braith. Uh, who are the other ones, Rob? Um, uh, last night it would have been Dean Ritchie, I think. That and might be Hoops. Might be Hoops in there. I can't remember, but here here it is anyway. I picked up the paper this morning in the SMH, there's this story, which I found a little bit insulting, <laughs> saying that Scott Fulton had influenced what I had written last week in that column, Braith, where I questioned yeah. what kind of a coach Benji would be. Uh, I found the assumption discrediting to me. Uh, Scott Fulton played no role in that story. I hadn't spoken to Scott Fulton. Uh, I'm big enough. I'm ugly enough to write my own views, and I will not be a mouthpiece for anybody. Mm. So for the Herald via the West Tigers to suggest that Scott had influenced me is wrong, uh, and I find it actually uh, insulting. And and you've responded to it? I have responded by saying along those lines, West Tigers are claiming paranoia in Mm. my eyes. Mm. They should worry about football, and at the moment... Get rid of the agendas. Get rid of trying to bag the News Corp journalists. And how about we start to think about avoiding a third uh, straight wooden pa- spoon? Are they paranoid a little bit here? The, the of course they are. They just, of course they are. It's, it's, it's a direct reaction to your article last week and 
and then Fairfax come and jump in and it's off. But they don't know what I went through, Brad. How but can you, they you, say... You spoke to a lot of sources too, I right? did, and Scott wasn't one of them. I'm not going to tell you who I spoke to. That's not fair. No, I wouldn't no, do that. Asking. But for them to come out and say, Scott Fulton's trying to find a job in rugby league. This is incredibly damaging to him. And I would, if I was him, I'd be looking at defamation. I, I heard that when the Scott Fulton was called about it, he said, the story's incorrect, so I don't want to comment. Yet in the, co- in the copy, it says that he declined to comment. It didn't actually say that he said the story was incorrect. Mm-hmm. The, the, the part's attributing leaking it to you. In specifically. So, look, I just think uh, Tigers, I don't want to keep going down this track, but they've got, they've got bigger problems than, than uh, us at the moment. And, look, this is a common theme out of Tigers, that whenever they start getting criticised, uh, they, uh, they, they blame agendas against them. fact is, uh, go and fix up your rucks at the moment. Yeah. Go and find See, out a little bit about, find some little bit of intent that's in your defence. That's what I take from this, Kenny, is it? Mm. You know, you come off a, a, a loss, a bad loss. Don't worry about the media. Mm. Don't worry about the noise. Focus about inside those four walls. Forget about that. It, it, the Tigers have done that for too long. Yep. They've, they've responded but and reacted to stories and all of us. Right, they, should have been, they should have had that attitude before the game. Rob, have you got an opinion on this whole uh, saga with Dean Ritchie and Benji Marshall? That's a, that's a long clip you played there, Josh. So much to comment on there. Uh, look, well, firstly, as I mentioned on last week's pod, I think Dean Ritchie went with his story just because it's going to be an, an easy target to, to bag the West Tigers later in the year should things go wrong. Dean Ritchie's tried to say that uh, by the fact that he's mentioned that, you know, Benji doesn't want to be a 24-7 coach, that if Benji goes well, he could revolutionise it. I, I think that's Dean Ritchie being a little bit optimistic. I, I don't want to you know, bag Dean Rich. He's actually been really good to me the last 12 months where he's run a couple of articles regarding me and Lee. Um, I think from the club point of view, I mean, look, everyone sort of hates Paul Kent pretty much, but I've got to be honest, I think I think he's right in a lot of things there. Every time the club's been criticised, we always blame something, something, someone, whether it's the media, whether it's, you know, if we get rid of, you know, a player, oh, he was bad news, he was selfish, he was a punter, he was this, he was no good for the group. There's just always an excuse, so I accept that part of it. But honestly, the funny thing about this, it's, it's actually just Fairfax Group having a dig at uh, News Corp. Like, it's just Michael Shamus, you know, ha- having a bit of a, a dig at Dean Ritchie I, and just the West Tigers are sort of in the crossfire of it all. Um, you know, some of the stuff that's being said, like, well, firstly, you know, it's it probably a little bit, inexperience, I think is the politest word, inexperience of Benji to come out late last year and say that he wasn't going to be a 24-7 coach. So I, I think that was wrong. And then if you go further, Shane Richardson has said he's dealt with Benji, he's dealt with Madge McGuire, and he's you know dealt with whoever, I might have been Wayne Bennett, and he said Benji's somewhere in the middle. So he's actually basically admitting that Benji isn't going to breathe, you know, live and sleep it. So, But I don't think, but I love the way Benji handled it with the media last week at training. He, he just said, well, what's a 24-7 coach? And if I prioritise my family between five and eight, what's wrong with that? But I, the thing is, though, I'm sure all coaches do that. Like, not every coach is coaching 24-7. They've got to be with their family. They've got to sleep. They've got to have their own little bit of spare time. But I think it was just, you know, probably poor of Benji to sort of be cocky enough to come out and say, well, I'm going to be different to any everyone else. That was that was a, a rookie mistake. I I think he just shouldn't have said anything at all late last year because these are guys are going to run with it. They're going to run with it late next year, and then heaven forbid if Luai comes on board and and we don't go well next year, they're going to rehash all this sort of stuff again. And is he doing enough work? And is he good enough? So I, I get the media love to bash us because we're the biggest clickbait. But honestly, I just thought it was hilarious that Shamus came out with this a few days after after Richie came out with it, that's all. But I, I think Benji handled it really well. I don't know if you've got the clip or not, Josh, but I, I thought I thought he spoke really well. And But I, I will say one thing on that NRL 360 thing, and we, and we said it last week, I'm, I'm sure I said it last week or the week before, doesn't matter what you think, doesn't matter what I think, doesn't matter what the media says, I don't think Benji needs to defend himself, Josh. I think mm. Benji's just got to, he really does have to focus on the footy and, and picking the right team and, because this noise is going to be continuous. Like, if we don't do well next year and early the season after that, like, Benji's there for the long haul. The club want him. The players love him. The pressure's going to be on forever. So there, there's a couple of ways you can handle it. And I just think it's going to be exhausting and taxing 
on everyone in the club if you keep got to answering stuff or refute stuff and on a totally different topic and nothing that's even as inflammatory just look at how brisbane are handling questions of last year's grand final kevin walters has instructed his players and himself not to talk about the grand final braith and astor asked him a question tonight and he didn't even answer it he just mentioned oh we got you know Payne Haas is out and you know this guy's in and whatever whatever he just totally ignored the question i think that's what we've got to do as a club just totally ignore it if it gets really out of hand, I'm sure Shane Richardson can handle it because that's what the CEO's job is, to handle all that heavy hitting stuff. But Benji's just got to, you know, try and stay out of it if he can. And I guess that's where Tim Sheens was a buffer last year. Tim Sheens, you know, took all the heat off Benji while Benji was sort of the unofficial coach. But mm. I, I, I don't, I, I just, like, guys, they just, you know, it's like all of us. If we know the Tigers are on the news or on the radio or whatever, we want to hear it. Whether it's you know legit or or, or crap or whatever, where it's just we, we have a big supporter base and and they want Tigers headlines and I'm just hoping and like we all are that the headlines are going to be for good footy on the field and and some success. But the reality is, you know, I think that's going to take a bit of time. A uh, bit of a response here. I don't know if you guys heard this. I think it only dropped today. The footy, the um, I'm trying to think of the brand. What's Triple M's? Podcast, a listener podcast called Woody Talk that Woodsy Woodsy doesn't host this one. This one's with Michael Chamis, uh, Danny Widler, and someone else. I can't remember who, but this is Michael Chamis talking about this whole thing because he's written uh, a few articles about it as well. I don't know. No, 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 people say I'm back to Tigers, but then I'm friends with this with Pasco or Hadjip and Tellus. Now I'm apparently friends with Richard. What I'm saying is that the Tigers feel there's a vendetta against them from News Corp. Because there's been things written about Shane Richardson, about conflicts of interest, which I wrote as well. Mm. But they he doesn't get along with Phil Rothfield and Phil Rothfield doesn't get along with Shane Richardson. The story that came out about Benji and the Tigers know that there are people at the club who used to be there have been bagging Benji behind his back. To his face sometimes when, he, when they were at the club. Legitimate story. The Tigers, the only way they can silence this is to start winning. And as I said, if Benji doesn't get the results, the question marks that were asked before round one are going to be asked very soon. Yeah, and but Benji's entitled to do things his way, and Scott Fulton, if he doesn't like it, he's entitled to criticise him. Yeah. He's, he's, well, he's not working for the place anymore. Yeah. If he wants to criticise him or say he doesn't work hard enough, it's his right to. He's been around the game for a while, so. Won't that not? make it harder for him to get a gig elsewhere? Or well, that's going to react that way to being. As, uh, do you think the West Tigers are targeted with an agenda? As Rob said, is just we have a massive fan base. Like they, they deny it all they want. And we had to credit um Michael Chalmers. We haven't was it last year or the year before Chalmers came on? It was a story I think about the year before. Yeah, he came on uh and talked. And I think everyone kind of that listened to that changed their opinion of him. I was hoping he mentioned our little show in that little clip there when he talk, talked about West Tigers fans having a crack at him. And he could have said that he came on our show and yeah had a good discussion with us but anyway as yeah do you think they go go after us because of the state of the club or do you think it's just they know it's it's the era of clickbait they know that we're a big fan base and it's going to get page impressions in the thousands honestly it's probably a little bit of both um you you kind of get the the school of thought where we are an easy club to pick on just because the club until recently has been so horribly run. Um, obviously that's improving now, but you kind of, you kind of just get those situations where they'll take the shots when they can get them. And most off season articles I remember seeing that didn't have anything to do with the Tigers necessarily still mentioned the Tigers in some way or some sort of the drama that happened at the club over the off season, whether it be the board sacking and, Richardson stepping in or whatever the heck else it may have been. It, it just seems like they, they take what they can get when they can get it. But because we're struggling and because they see that we're struggling, we are sort of the easy target. Um, the Dragons, obviously, the last couple of years have become sort of that easy target now as well. Uh, and if they keep losing like they did to the Dolphins, then it'll just start getting worse and worse for them too. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much milk as much as we can hopefully look as you guys have mentioned and 
plenty of people in our comments have mentioned, and the guys that we've clipped have mentioned, if the West Tigers start winning them, this will all go away. So fingers crossed we can get a win and Benji can kind of have the critics can't like not go at him as much as well. Yeah, but you, you just can't bag the hypocrisy of it, Josh, because yeah. Phil, Rothfield, Phil Rothfield saying that Shane Richardson's got a conflict of interest like, there is, but I don't think it's a bad conflict of interest. Why didn't he say the same thing about Lee Hadjipentel as a sponsor of other club, being a chairman of the club and a sponsor? So he, he never ran with that in Hadjipentel's four years. So, you know, to be fair, he, he's not consistent. Like, I, I don't mind him saying that Richo's got a conflict if he'd have said uh, that Hadjipentel has did, but he didn't because he was getting free lunches at Grappa every Friday. So yeah. it's it, it's just it's just a witch hunt and and we've seen with Rothfield before, you know, if he's got a grudge with someone, like he's had a grudge with Phil Gould and he and he's hammered him for the last few years yeah. every chance he gets. So I, I just I just wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, fuck him. Um right, we've had a few people email us and order put a pre order in for our West Life podcast jerseys. So if you have if it's the first time you've seen this, I think we mentioned the last couple of shows, but uh on the video up on the screen I've got a uh, the what's it called? I'm trying to. I'm not s smart enough to know what it's called. Like a blueprint, the design, the render, rendering. I think it's called a rendering. So basically, the drawing of what the jersey will look like based on the 2014 retro jersey. So the big, thick orange, black, and white stripes. It's a cotton style. Um, it's similar to uh, Noons was saying that they do a lot of these for. Year 12. So, but Holy Cross use the exact same ones. If anyone knows any year, uh, Holy Cross students, so they do the Holy Cross Year 12 jumpers, very similar to that. So, nice, comfy, high quality uh, cotton. This $80 to pre order. So, we're going to put in order in on Friday. Podcast at westlife.com. I'll give you the details on how to order. I think we've got um, seven or eight people that have emailed through so we could get a nice big order we i was even thinking when we do get them in we might be able to have a meet up and get a photo of all of us in our uh, westlife jersey do a team team photo or something we'll work it out when it comes to may or i can mail it i know um be a bit hard for phil rogers who's buying one all the way from england so i'm going to ship one off to uh i think london i think he's in london i don't know um so it'd be cool to see his a photo of him over in England, wearing his Westlife podcast. Good weather for it over there. So, uh, yeah, 80 bucks. Yeah, good high quality. Just in time for winter, it should come in about May. So, uh, if you're listening on audio and you want to see what they look like, slide into the DMs. A lot of people have this week. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a shot what it looks like and then give you details. So, either email podcast at westlife.com, slide in the DMs of Twitter, Instagram, at Westlife Pod. Um and yeah, I'll uh, I'll reply and yeah, we're gonna send in an order for Friday. So try try and get yeah, get your order in if you listen to this on Thursday, try and get your order in by tonight and I'll uh yeah, give noons give noons the the cashola and he'll send it off to the uh the printers. Do they print? I don't know. I don't know. Here's here's the pro. Whatever however you make jerseys, I don't know. It's I'm sure it's definitely made in um a reputable reputable part of the world and yeah it's yeah high high quality stuff from dynasty the same place that, that do the jerseys for warriors manly and i always forget these warriors manly uh trying to think it's the sharkies i'll have to ask our sharkies guests trying to think who it might be they might do the sharkies as well actually just quietly so high quality um proper nrl quality brand so oh we're just just about to bring our special guest in and he's dropped out so we're about to preview the game this weekend west tigers v cronulla sharks as while we wait for our guest to come back in do you want to read out the west tigers team list so the game is 7 30 this saturday evening at the eighth wonder of the world take it away as too easy all right so at fullback we have jareem buller Wingers are Charlie Staines and Junior Tupo. Centers are Solomona Fa'atape and Justin Olam, who plays his first game for the club. 
Halves are Lachlan Galvin and Aiden Caesar, who moves into the starting side. Props are Stefano Uto Ikamanu and David Klemmer. Api Korosau is at hooker. Isaiah Papali'i and John Bateman are the second rowers, with Fanua Pole moving into lock. Jaden Sullivan moves back to the bench along with Alex Seyfarth, and Alex Twal and Samuel Fainu remain on the bench as well. Asu Kepa'oa remains 18th man with Jake Simkin, Justin Matamua, Alex Lobb, and Brent Naden on the reserves. Thank you. As and our guest, Michael, making his debut on the show, I just noticed I did, you might have just dropped out to go put on your Dynasty branded Sharks jersey. It is Dynasty Why? that do. Yeah, no, nah, we moved to classic, unfortunately. Oh, okay. The so Dynasty ones are okay. way better. Yeah. No, nah, the Dynasty um, ones are really good, man. Yeah, just quietly. Look, I don't want to bag Steeden out too much, but yeah, the, the, the Dynasty, Dynasty stuff across the Warriors, Manly, and what they did with you guys is pretty awesome. So, um, give them, yeah, give them a lot of plugs. Noons will be happy with that. But yeah, legitimately, they do make awesome stuff. Uh, Michael, how are you this evening? And yeah, maybe we'll start off. Tell us how you became a Sharkies fan. Are you from the Shire? I don't see some cross tattoo on your neck. No, I have a Sharks tattoo. But, really? Um, Where's yeah, that located? I, on my arm. I told everyone when I was in year 10 that we would, if we won the comp, I would get a tattoo. So when uh, they won... I got bombarded with about 80 messages all at once going, are you getting that tattoo? So, yeah, no, I'm from Canberra, um, and I got into the Sharks because I liked a fridge magnet. That's yeah, it. right. It's it's funny how, like, fan, when you're a kid, literally anything, this is why I keep saying to the West Tigers club, because I know they listen, I know they do a lot of school stuff, hand out, get, get some company in China to print out a thousand little soft footies with West Tigers on it and just pump them into the schools because it literally would take one ball or one one little meeting with a player, something, and you got a fan for life. It literally, like you said, a fridge magnet has made you yeah. a Sharks fan for life. When, when you're a kid, not me, I was brainwashed by my uh, Balmain Mad family. I was... Yeah, yeah. For, forced well, to become a Tigers fan, but yeah, kids. Then my kids dad can he's fans a, anyway. My dad's a Rabbitohs fan, but so I was born in '88. So, oh, me too. Like, so the the Rabbitohs were terrible when I was a little child, sure but he were. had all the New South Wales Rugby League logos as fridge magnets. Um, yeah, right. So yeah, I really, yeah, I just always liked the Sharks, and then. Um, I, I think I really got into him. He took me – the first Sharks game I ever went to was a semi-final against Brisbane, um, and Dave Peachy scored this really long try off the scrum, and, like, that was it. Like, I, it was like drugs from <laughs> from then to now, just yeah. constant. And obviously yeah. 2016. So 2016, you would have been, what, 20, 30, what, 32 years old? 20, 28. Um, yeah, no, I think it's pretty Mass wild. Uh, yeah, it was uh, that, that was a very awesome but also horribly stressful day. Um, mm. So, like, and I went to sort of – it worked out that I went to sort of the, the last five games of the season and I think I kind of went a bit mad at the Canberra game because that's, that's where I'm from. So seeing them beat Canberra in a massive mm. game like that in my own town was pretty – it was it – was, an amazing experience, but, mm. but yeah, no, 2016 was, yeah, that's what, it, that's what it was all about. You know, seeing them win. Yeah. I finally saw him win. It was unbelievable. But you know, I, I was at your 2005 game as well. Cause my, my uncle is big Balmain guy and he flew in from Japan when they made it. Wow. And we all drove up and bought some t- sport scalper tickets off a person in like a uh, mascot or something. And then we yeah, all went right. to the game. And we were high up in the nosebleeds, but yeah, that was a that was a that was a great thing to be at. Yeah, yeah, I was at that. I was behind the post, the opposite side to the Benji Marshall, the Pat Richards try. But yeah, that was mm. I was seven and a half, so you would have been you were the same age. So you would have been probably either just eighteen or not quite eighteen. Well, not quite. So not. I went the next yeah. year 
when Brisbane played Melbourne and I could yeah. buy beer at that one. But yeah. at the 20, 2005 one, yeah, it was still underage. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, me too. No, that was a hell of a game, man. Yeah. I, I, I want another premiership. Obviously, just want another premiership to, to be – look, it might – cost me my marriage but because my wife might not see me for 24 hours but us, well, that's the thing, us right? through... see i i always <laughs> said i just want one right and like it was the greatest feeling ever mm. for that from like winning from from the moment it was over like the, the game day was like great but also awful um but then the moment from was over basically until we got knocked out in the semis the next year it was like this great just awesome feeling but now it's been like what eight years and it's like i, I want it again you got to get it yep. again well it's what 18 18 for us since 2005 no going on 19 so on 19. yeah we'll, we'll feel it i'll feel you there um as do you want to run us through the sharky side for this saturday's game Will do. All right. So William Kennedy is the fullback. Sione Katoa and Ronaldo Mulatalo are the wingers. Jesse Ramian and Sia Sipitalakai in the centers. Braden Trindle and Nico Hines in the halves with Toby Rudolph, Oregon Kafusi as props. Blake Braley is the hooker. Jack Williams and Teague Wilton in the second row with Cameron McInnes at lock. Dale Finucan, Ross Royce Hunt, sorry, Billy Burns and Tom Hazelton are on the bench. Kale Iro is 18th man. Tuku Hao Tapua and Daniel Atkinson, Samuel Stone Street, and Jaden Beryl make up the reserves. Thank you. We'll start with, didn't really discuss the West Tigers changes. So obviously, uh, Justin Olm comes in for the injured Stafford Toa, who probably, uh, for the pay, might have been replaced instead of Toa. Who knows? Uh, but Justin Olm is always going to, if healthy, come into the starting side. Rob, a huge look outside backs was the edges have been a weakness for the West Tigers. It's a look, I don't know if he's a hundred percent ready to go, but very happy to see Justin Ollum put into the side for his debut. Yeah, he looked uh he looked like he was running pretty freely last week at training. Uh well we we need him. Uh we, we could do with two of him if he's you know, a place to his potential. Uh, obviously, Fata Arpe looks like he'll switch over to the other side, so he's going to have a hell of a time marking Talakai. Uh, but look, just mm. just a little bit disappointed, guys, that, you know, a couple of blokes uh, stayed in the 17, uh, albeit they got dropped to the bench. I just, I, I gave you a quote earlier, Josh, but I was just thinking if, you know, if we're talking about setting standards, I, I think we've got to show it. And like I said Monday night, you know, Wayne Bennett, Put the axe straight away after after their you know first game loss. Uh, you're seeing South do it now after a second mm. game with their halfback. You know, same with Jackson Hastings. Jackson Hastings, so, yeah. So every team's kind of put the chop to it, but with us and and I don't know if it's for a lack of not having other players underneath to come up, but I, I mean, there's talk that you know Caesar's got this hamstring niggle, so perhaps you know Bud Sullivan's been given a reprieve because we need someone as a backup half. But I mean. You know, you could always put Simkin or De Silva on the bench and Appy could switch to halfback if, if need be, like if there was a necessity. But, um, yeah, just, look, just disappointed they, they stayed there and uh, we're not giving another bloke a chance. Uh, as Fanua Pole comes into the... Because Alex Seifarth was 13 last week, wasn't he? Correct. Did I imagine that? Yeah, yes, so was, the, yeah. Boop, a swap there, uh, Pole. At lock, I think the three of us tend to prefer Pole in the front yeah, rotation, Polo, but Polo's he played middle. well last week. Polo. Yeah. We Sorry, Josh, As? we lost you a little bit there, but uh, basically what I think you were trying to say is, um, yeah, I, do, I think all of us prefer Pole in the front row rotation coming off the bench, obviously. I think I made a comment um, in Monday's episode about how we made those really big runs off the back fence, especially after we scored that first try. And I think that's a better role for him. But at the moment, he may be what we need to fill in the gap at lock because it doesn't seem like we have um, any other players really who might be capable of taking that role. Um, Seifarth, to, like, as much as he tries, it's probably not his position. Um as for the other guys, we've got Matamua in the reserves, but he didn't really perform mm -hmm. all that well in uh, the reserve grade game last week where I think he was playing lock there too. So 
it does seem like that's a bit of a weak spot in our team at the moment. So maybe Pole can do the job until we find a, a new player to get there. I tell you what, though, I wouldn't mind having one Joe Offerhand Gowie at the club right about now to take mm-hmm. that, that position, eh? Yeah, another, yeah, another good one that we let go. Michael, from the outside looking in, this half situation with Caesar and Sullivan. So we've done a swap, put it half. As Rob mentioned before, putting a half at 14 instead of a hooker, a young, talented hooker in Talon De Silva that we've got in reserve. Uh, I think he's played flag this week, actually. Um, yeah, from the outside looking in, does this baffle you? Like, and does it, as an opponent this week, kind of give you a bit more confidence? Um. Well, so I, I actually was at the game last week. West against the Raiders. Of course, you're in Canberra, yeah. Um, I thought your halfback who played last week was, he shouldn't have been there. And to not play Caesar in that game was really odd, I thought, given that he's played there. He knows the Raiders. He knows a lot of those guys. And so in one way, yes, it's better now that you put him in the side in the seven to go with Galvin because he was quite good. Um, but then he's, it's a bit of a sort of wasted spot on the bench. Mm. Um, a bit like last year, like we were doing this thing where we would play Moylan, but then we would put Trindle on the bench to come on for like 10 minutes for who knows why until eventually they dropped Moylan. Um, but, yeah, look, I, I would have gone with a different player, maybe that De Silva. He looked pretty exciting. I mean, he's a young guy, but, you know, you. I think in the moment if you're going to run with like this this young dude, Galvin, and have an experienced halfback in Caesar, you don't need another halfback there, right? Mm. You wouldn't think so. Yeah. That- I'm, sure, I'm sure he's only there because Caesar's got a, a poor hamstring. But even so, like I said, you could, if if the hamstring went, Appy could go to halfback. And, and mm. whether it's Jake Simpkin or De Silva, yeah. you, you put one of them in a hooker. That's right. But also, if he's, if he's not fit enough that you need to carry this extra guy and then – sort of weaken your bench, then should he be playing? Yeah, we, we've literally yep. got no one. We've got no one else. Uh, we've got uh, Latu Fane making his comeback this week or he's named to make his comeback. Whether he actually plays or not will be a different story. So we're, we, we, yeah, we're sort of a little bit thin at the moment in terms of yeah, who thin. we can play and who we, can, who we can't. So a Facebook comment from Josh McRapbag. Surely that's not your real name, Josh, but... Um... Yeah, imagine surely you didn't grow up with a name Mac Rap, Rap Mac Rap Bag, but um, <laughs> either way, he said surely Stain's last shot to impress boys, as we were hoping for Lob City this week, or when we picked our uh, best seventeen for the year, we were all ha- we want to see Alex Lob. A lot of people said to us that he didn't impress that much in Cup, but he played in a pretty crappy side. Um, yeah, it's, it, sometimes it's hard to impress playing in a side without good quality players, especially on the wing. Like a winger will always, like we've seen it with David Nofaluma. He goes to the Storm and he looks better than when he plays at the West Tigers. We've seen it with other players that go to good clubs. So I think, I don't know. I just want to, I want to see Alex Lobb. I want to see some few bombs put up. And when a bomb goes out to, Charlie Staines, we're all going to be holding our breath. Whereas if it was going out to Alex Lobb, it'd be yeah, you'd have a lot lot more confidence. As much as I love little little, I say little, he's probably six inches taller than me. Love Charlie Staines, yeah, Lob City as why not? You may actually remember Josh that when we did our uh, preseason one to seventeens, I actually had Charlie Staines in instead of Alex Lobb. Purely uh, because I, did, of I forgot the fact that. that we. We didn't get to see the best of him last year, I thought. Um, yeah. So I, I still don't mind if we give Charlie a little bit more time, uh, just because I think there is a lot of potential there. Uh, yeah, he's not as tall as Alex, but um, the the thing with Charlie is he, he has more first grade experience, and I think we might need to try and use that a little bit more. But I wouldn't mind seeing Alex Lobb in there. Like you said, he's tall. He can contest a bomb, and we haven't really had a tall winger for ages. Um but I, I do think Charlie is still a good option there. He didn't have the best game 
on the weekend, but honestly, neither did a lot of other players. Aaron, I don't, uh, I don't think Charlie Charlie suits us, mate. I, I really don't. I, I think like I've, I've beaten this uh, Alex Lobb thing to death about his height, about him being a target. Charlie Staines is like a similar version to Alex Johnson, to Jason Saab. If he was with South or Manly and getting put into space by Tom Trebojevic, he'll have 15, 20 tries every year. He, he's a finisher. And like we don't have guys that can put him in a hole and let him use that unbelievable finishing speed that he's got. So I, I just I, – I, he's a good winger. I, I know he had a couple of bad moments last week, really bad moments in particular when he got smashed by Ethan Strange and there was one other moment. But generally he tries hard. I've got, I've got no issue with him there. But it just – given who our centres are, it just doesn't suit him. Like may, maybe if he's playing outside Olam and Olam can get his arms free and, and give him a free run to the line, it, you know, he'd be he'd look useful. But – I just don't think he suits us, mate. He's just another Alex Johnson. He's a he's a finisher. He's not he's not a guy a barnstorming winger, you know. Mm. Yeah. Who will be his opposing winger, Mike? What what side is Mulatalo. Charlie on? He's on the right, so it'll be Molotalo. Yeah, it'll be Do Ronnie. Think, does that look? You saw poor Charlie go for a try against the what was the Raiders wingers? That young Raider. Raiders Zavis, winger, Zavis. Raiders winger, Zavis, yeah. yeah. You saw him get cleaned up going for a try last week. So seeing that footage and having Ronaldo running at him, is there a bit of confidence there? Oh, well, Ronnie's an excellent player, um, and he's very aggressive, and he likes to get under people's skin. So, like, if he can get one over on his direct opposite, uh, he will try and do it. Um, it's funny with Staines, like when he debuted, he played against the Sharks when he was at Penrith and he scored four tries. Four tries, oh, four tries yeah. Henson um, Park, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it was in Henson or Cogger or something silly in COVIDville. But um yeah. yeah, they Yeah, it's um I don't know, it's I think Ronnie will do do pretty well uh against him. But you know, Charlie is a good player and um, you know, we just have to wait and see. Uh, as any matchups from the Sharks that put a put a bit of fear into you? Yeah, there's a couple. Uh, the first one I think is probably going to be Talakai up against um, Faatape because obviously Faatape is pretty inexperienced, and CSC for Talakai is is a beast of a human. And the last time we played the Sharks, I think it might have been he absolutely tore us to shreds after giving. Uh, one of the manly players, a bit of a bath uh, the year before, like two years ago, I think that that might be. I can't remember which manly player it was, but he absolutely tore them to shreds that one time. Uh, their wingers as well. I'm very concerned about them. Sione Katoa and Ronaldo Mulatalo both have very good games against us typically. Uh, they're both tall. They're both fast. They're both incredibly dangerous um, in open space. And Nico Hines hasn't had the best start to the season, even though the Sharks have been winning their game. So, we really have to watch out for him this weekend too. Mm, yep. The young Central Coasty with the long locks, I'm sure. At the very least, the, all the uh, all the mums on the hill at Leichhardt will uh, be impressed by him. But yeah, Nico Hines, great play. What, how's his form the first two games, Michael, Nico, this year? Oh, you know, I think Nico's been pretty good. He hasn't exactly like done all the try assist stuff and um, all that kind of flashy, you know, things that we're used to seeing from him. But his defence has been really good. Like, he brought – he made two – he's made two try-saving tackles in two weeks. Like, he brought down kick out, like, when the game was still sort of in the cut and thrust last week. So, he's he's doing fine. Um, I think, you know, now that Trindle's there – and Braley and Kennedy's back. Maybe there's a little bit sort of less pressure on him to do do it all all the time. Um, and if that means that he has, you know, if he isn't just doing try assists and uh, sort of on the ball all the time, because you, you may you may remember last year we've had a couple of games where he was he played this sort of weird frantic, like I have to do everything all the time right now immediately. And he didn't really work. Um, but, yeah, I think he's, he's just building into the season. He's playing fine. I don't think he's been worth 12 Dalian points, but 
he's he's been perfectly fine and he's you know playing well. I like it. He was enjoying the house too. He just then it was reminding me of the Blair Witch Project as you're walking through through your dark the dark rooms of your house, changing changing positions. There, my thumbs just got up and got into our bed, so now I've moved. <laughs> Ah, uh, all good, all good. Um, yeah, just right our stats, man. Have you got anything for us for this game? You actually stole my thunder earlier a little bit, Josh. Um, my my stat for tonight was the fact that Leichhardt is one of the very few grounds we have a winning record at. Um, oh, sorry. So I did I did find it. It's ninety three games played, fifty one wins, a draw, and forty one losses meaning we have a 55% win record there. The only get grounds that we are better at are Wollongong, Lancaster, wherever that is, uh, the showground, wherever that is as well, and our one trip and our one trip to Bathurst has been a successful trip. I think the showground is uh, the Giants Stadium, I think. I think that's it's, what it's, it's where where we beat Canterbury in round two of about I don't know two thousand and four might have been our only game there. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a showground where the Thunder and the Giants play. I'm pretty sure that's showground. Isn't it is. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, we've, well, whatever, wherever this ground is, we've played three games there with two wins and a loss. Same with Lancaster, wherever. Yeah, that, is. that might, that might be in England. Lancaster. Or no idea. Lancaster. Who who are the opponents uh, for oh, Lancaster? Here it is. A, it, also known as AMI Park. Oh, it's Melbourne. Right. Okay. That's what Melbourne. So if you remove AME from that's what it's called. Lancaster. Okay. So that's okay. So Lancaster is that's Melbourne. That's Melbourne Stadium without the sponsorship. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, just notice too that Mick Fitz joined as a YouTube member. Good on you, Mick. So I'm not sure if Mick's in our Discord or not yet, but send me a DM. Send us a DM um, on any of the socials, mate, and I'll send you a link through to the Discord. So if you don't want to become a Patreon member and you're watching on the YouTubes, you can become a YouTube member instead. Or you can be Gussie, the super fan, he's a member on both as well uh, and sends us in supercharges at uh, supercharges uh, super chats as well i just saw gussie slide into the comments as well so thanks for your support there mick uh I th- I right just, just just quickly josh i think benjamin angus in the comments there is right he says nah it's christchurch um because i clicked on it to take a bit more of a look at it and the really the only opponent we've played there has been new zealand Okay, well, it's never, never going to be Melbourne because we never beat Melbourne in Melbourne, so it's got to be somewhere else. Yes, we did. Oh, round, AMI, round two, AMI not Amy, right? Yeah, one okay. game. <laughs> He's saying it was destroyed in the 2012 earthquake. Okay, that's a bit of a oh, wow. dark, dark end. There you go. To that discussion, right? Okay. Um, Michael, do you have any memories of a West Tigers Sharks game? Obviously, the big one for us is 2005. Benji, step, step, step step then uh pass it into pat richards and back out to daniel fitzhenry for a try in 2005 that's probably might be my favorite regular season game i've ever been to that was a great day to be at shark park i actually quite enjoy going to shark park of all the grounds i've seen the tigers play there four times i quite quite enjoy shark park but um any Look, it's probably going to break our hearts, but yeah, any West Tigers Sharks games that from our history that come to mind? Um, well, I've been to a couple. Um, I went to a game at Leichhardt. It would have been 2010. It was like the third or fourth game after Stewart left and Flanagan became the coach. And you guys beat us, which you should have done. But And this is like... You know when you say, oh, the, the shit teams get the shit calls? We scored a try and the ref just goes, oh, no, nah, you didn't get it on the line and just kept playing on. Um, uh, that so happened to us at Manly. I, and it's just like, mm. it's so funny how it all flips. Um, one that sticks in my mind is round one, 2012. Uh, I watched it at the club with a few mates. Uh, it was the debut of Todd Carney at Sharks. Um, you just lost your audio a bit there, 
Michael, your audio has just dropped out a little bit. Oh, sorry, sorry, mate. Um, yeah, the round one 2012 game when you guys beat us on the bell with that awesome Benji field goal. Um, um, I missed actually missed that one. At the, I think we mentioned this the other night. I missed that. I was had to work that night. Yeah, it's so probably that, the only Leichhardt game I've missed in the past. So like, if you if you look at like rugby league, if you look at rugby league projects or whatever, when you guys beat us that day, you would won like. 15 games to our five yeah. um, in, in the history of the clubs. And now, if you look at it now, it's like 17, 18. Um, I've literally so got up like, on the screen. Yeah, I've got, I've yeah, got our so past. That like, yeah. That was like the, the last day of sort of ascendancy uh, that West had. Um, but, I mean, look, everyone everyone remembers the Gallon thing because it was so funny. Um, Hilarious. Because, you know, I mean, look, he, the fact that he decided, oh, I'll just kick it. And then, yeah. It, like, it was a nice kick. Um, he did try yeah. one years, years before, and it was sort of, he bung, he sort of marked it up against the Raiders and he didn't, didn't get it. But the fact that he hit it so sweetly, but also, you know, you guys were so sort of beaten from the game that yeah. everyone just sort of stood there and watched him do it. Um, so, you know, I mean, that, that's the sort of famous one, but yeah, no, the, the the Benji Marshall try one, I listened to that game when I was working at the Tuggeranong Bowling Alley and Mm. I I had a bad Sunday that when I was in like year 10, that was, uh, Mm. yeah, not enjoyable, but, um, yeah, you know, I mean, there's been, there's been a few good games. I remember Benji knocked him over like pins, funny enough, as he stepped around. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, I remember a game in so in 2017. You had us dead to rights um, oh, at uh, at Star Park, and then we scored two of the sort of softest, lamest tries to win. And I was just like, "What? What is this sport? What what goes on? Like, mm. how are this how's this Cronulla team falling in again? And also, how's how have West like sort of let this happen? Um, but yeah, no, I mean. That- they have Michael, that game you're talking about there, that 2017 one, my mm. worst experience at a football game ever was at that game. Like, I was there and I copped a, a lot of crap, um, including actually physical abuse from some Sharkies fans attempting oh, to get no, out. So no, that's not good. That, was br- that was brutal. Did you, have walk walk past, did you have to walk past the hill of people? Uh, well, yeah, so I was at the... I was at the um, Actually, no, I didn't walk past the hill. I was on that corner, like at the base of the hill, um, the back end of the try line, like on the opposite side to where the players run out. When the Sharks score their first try off a blatant forward pass, you can actually see me stand up and call out that that was forward because it was directly in my direction. But then, yeah, as I was trying to leave after the game, after like what was it, an honestly really heartbreaking way to lose, I'm just mm. minding my own business, trying to make my way out of there. I get pushed to the ground by some Sharks fans and have beer dumped on me, like half-drunk beers dumped on me. I ended up yeah. with a concussion from that, and I don't remember too much more other than somehow making my like making my way back home driving. Well, I mean, that's that's bullshit, man. Like, stuff like that at footy. Like, this is Australia. Like, you, we shouldn't be doing that. Like, mm. no one should be doing it anyway, but, like, to have it at Rugby League, like, it's the NRL, there's 26 games. Like, it, you know, there's no promotion relegation. We'll be back next week. It's like, come on. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, the worst experience I've probably had is Penrith. Um, it's probably the worst crowd experience I've had. Every time I've gone to Cronulla, it's been fine. You obviously just got a couple of random dickheads that you came across as. So, yeah, it's, yeah. It sucks. Yeah, because I, I quite like going to Shark Park to watch games. Rob, you got any Cronulla Tigers memories? Any from the 80s that stick out? We beat him in a semi. Balmain beat him in a semi, didn't they? Yeah, in 1988, we won the major mm. preliminary final. Uh, Cronulla got the minor premiership. They went out in straight sets that year. Um, and, yeah, we, we got to the grand final. That was a great experience. That was... That yeah, was you were born, one, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, really good memory and obviously, like, very excited to see my first grand final and know that I was going to be going to my first grand final 
uh, I'll say that wasn't a preliminary. Yeah, it was the game before. I think someone had got the week off and then we got to the grand final because we'd made a run from the playoff for fifth. But it's funny mm. enough, and this is showing my age here, my first memory of ever going to a Tigers football game was as a, like a little three or four-year-old was in the late 60s, mum and dad having a blanket. As you watch TV at Endeavour Field, if you look at the left-hand side, we were behind the goalposts there, and I remember like had a couple of aunties with me and stuff like that. It was like six or seven of us, and that was actually the first game that I can remember going to. So, um, look, that was a, the Balmain sort of stuff. Uh, West Tigers stuff, obviously I remember 2012, game one, I was there. I remember a game on a Saturday night, wouldn't be that long ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, where we had to shift Kevin Nagama to fullback or something. We had Cronulla dead and buried, and they, they came back that Saturday night and beat us. Uh, obviously, the 2019 game, because that was the winner made the semifinals, and I just remember enjoying getting to that game so much. Like, there were more people outside than there were inside. I've, I've ne- I don't remember seeing Leichhardt that packed for a long time. Uh, but other than that, mate, I, I actually haven't been to Shark Park for a long time, mate, because, you know, I, mm. I think... Uh, I think Lebs should stay away from Cronulla, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might cop the Aaron treatment. So, <laughs> haven't been. Well, I, think, many years. I, I think you'd be all right now, but yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, well, you, know, you can fit considerably less people into it now, so um, yeah, you know, you, you should be all right. Yeah, no, there's, yeah, there's, there's no okay. Gronk Hill anymore because they put a hotel on it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, just one thing on your stats, guys. I, I mean, one thing we should mention. Cronulla were down 12 nil against New Zealand after like 15 minutes in round one. They were get, getting absolutely smashed. If it wasn't for a couple of Jackson Ford drop balls, I, I think it could have been anything like 30 nil at half time. Cronulla have only conceded like one try in the last 145 minutes. So mm. they, they really have a strong defense. So as much as I'm worried about them putting points against us, I don't know where our points are going to come from. Their defense has just been so rock solid. Uh, we're going to have to find ways of scoring a try other than, other than trying to go set for set with them. Because I've got to be honest, I, I like how Cronulla generally play. I haven't been impressed with their attack the last two weeks. You can tell they're just rusty. They're so out of sync. Yeah, but, but, but their defence and their resilience is second to no one. Like maybe Melbourne would be on a par in terms of resilience, but their defence is just so good. And, you know, to come back against New Zealand the way they did, and even Canterbury, to their credit, Canterbury in the game for a, a good while there and looked like they could have rolled them and then and then Cronulla just you know wore them down in the end. So I don't think Cronulla are in the in the strongest attacking form and I just hope that keeps up this week and and we can find a way to score some points somehow. Right, uh, Rob Sadamus, I totally forgot to copy and paste it into the slide, but what have you got for us this oh, week? Oh gosh, you've put me on the spot here because I can't remember. Well, firstly, I just want to apologise for that. Out. For my try scoring multis, they've been absolutely uh, terrible. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head who I've, I've got. Aaron, you're going to have so to. So Sydney, I got it. I got it here. Yeah. Sydney. So their horses again. Your horse tips have been good lately. Uh, Sydney ra- race four number two Brave Mead, That's as in it. David Mead. Yep. Uh, race six number one Militarize. Yeah. And race nine number eleven Sunshine in Paris. In Paris. And so. and, and they're both. I, the reason I've gone though is of course we do this show on a Wednesday night and I've got to give them to you by Wednesday afternoon. It, it kind mm. of really doesn't matter if the track's good or the track's a little bit soft or anything like that. They they sort of all, all those horses are good on on you know all styles of tracks. Mick Fitz, our new uh, YouTube member, he says happy first try this weekend. I used to actually that just brings up a sharks. Uh, memory for me, Robbie Farrah. So I used to always put money on Robbie Farrah to score last try, and I'm oh. sure he got a yeah. hat trick. The one night I forgot or didn't put it on, he scored a hat trick. I went to I went to Cronulla. I was at this game. He put a hat trick on the Sharks, and I didn't back him for last try to score her. Like I was backing him every week for last try. Yeah. And he scored three. I think he scored the first and the last. He definitely he, scored the last. And I was he got, he got the up. last try, and he and he had a, yeah. had a full grown beard back then, Josh. And I remember when he grounded the ball, he he got up and then he like slammed the ball because we'd had a big lead that night, and Cronulla yeah. came back into it, and then Robbie Robbie iced the game, and and yeah, he kind of slammed the ball down, and that, I think that was yeah. last game, of 2011, and and we were on a like a nine game mm-hmm. winning streak or something like that. It was, it was pretty decent. 
yeah, the show I like was probably hated. Uh, a bearded, bearded Robbie getting the last try <laughs> to put the uh, to put, to put on the uh, the uh, cherry on the top of that one. I can't remember what year that was, but um, 2011. Yeah. Yeah, a good victory, but it was yeah. I was, like obviously stoked that the boys won, but spewing that literally every week I was backing him for last try scorer, and I didn't that week. Uh, on to our tips of the week. So we'll go through all eight games for this weekend. Uh, first up, we've all gone the Penny Panthers. They are playing. Who are they playing as? Broncos. Broncos. So it's a tough. As we're chatting about our tips the last uh, 24 hours or so, we're, yeah, it's a tough, tough, tough round this weekend. I think, I think and I, the toughest round by far. Toughest yeah. round by far. Broncos are four bucks. Why are the Broncos four dollars? The, bro- the Broncos are no, missing, Adam, no Adam Reynolds and no Payne Haas. No, yeah, no, no Reynolds, no Payne Haas. They've got our former Tiger Jock Madden in at half, and mm. don't forget Penrith are missing Fisher Harris. And they've replaced him with Lindsay Smith starting in the side. Uh, Michael, any objections? Do you think Penrith in this one? Um, I think without both Reynolds and Haas, it'd be a bit of a tall order to beat the Panthers. Um, so yeah, Penrith should win. Uh, we've all gone Warriors over the Raiders. New Zealand, New Zealand might not lose a game at home. This, uh, well, they, this is a hard game. Round one. This is for round one. Oh, yeah, so the Sharkies yeah. beat him round one, didn't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got, we've all got the Warriors <laughs> in this one. Yeah, re- really hard game again, guys. I mean, the Warriors have um, Wade Egan back. Uh, you know, the Raiders are missing Sebastian Chris with a concussion. They've moved Hopawati into centres and Cotri come back on, comes back on the wing. But weirdly for Canberra, like one of their best players has been Zach Hosking, and they've just shunted him back to the bench to put Elliot Whitehead there, which is a really, you know, I, I don't know. I, I know that's showing faith in your players, but my God, Hosking's been amazing, not just with his general play, but with his aerial play as well. So th- this is another tough game, guys. I, I'll tell you what I probably should have done for Rob Sudamas. I reckon there's going to be two golden point games this, this week. How about that? I, I think okay. th- there's, so, there's so many games where... The form team is playing a desperate team, and we've got that with New Zealand versus Canberra. We've got Newcastle desperate to beat Melbourne. I just think there's so many tight games. I'm confident that I'm going to get between eight out of eight and one out of eight. Like that's that's just that's how that's how it could go. <laughs> it's got, the game's in Christchurch as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Eight p.m. Friday night. I always I love South playing the Rabbitohs. It's always the the book of feuds. As they call it, so we've all gone the Chookies in this one, but yeah, this is always a great match with plenty, plenty of um, heat in it. As what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, the Roosters are looking pretty good, and they're going to be hurting after losing to Manly. I know they don't have Luke Keary, which is a massive out for them, but the Rabbits are missing a, a few players who they're going to be missing for most of, if not all, the season. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm really starting to think that the Rabbits are going to struggle this year and could finish potentially around maybe 10th to um, like 13th range. And that would be like a real big fall from grace from a few years ago, um, even though they missed last year. But yeah, I, Roosters, I think, will be too good in this one. Yeah, uh, that, that, was my, that was my hot take, Aaron, that the South would miss the eight in our pre-season, preseason tips. I remember that. Uh, Titans, uh, Doggies Titans in Belmore on Saturday afternoon. I've gone the Doggies since the Doggies playing at Belmore. I know the Doggies suck. They are their favorites in the betting. Um, you boys have gone Titans. I don't know. I feel a bit dangerous this week. I've gone Doggies in this one. Doggies at Belmore. They've got to win eventually. Just like the yeah, Tigers. They- they're, they're playing well. I, I just went Titans because of Kieran Foran. Whenever Kieran Foran plays, they seem mm-hmm. to do well. Um, you know, the, the doggies are, are playing pretty well with the exception of their their props basically resemble tackling bags with legs. Like, all they need are a couple of props and, and they'd be doing really well. So, uh, look, they've got Liam Knight in this week because their young uh, prop forward, whose name escapes me, got smashed in the first tackle of the game against Cronulla last week and, and copped a major concussion. Um, but, yeah, I, I, again, this is a coin flip, guys. This, this is definitely 
two teams that don't know how to win generally go to Golden Point. So this is mm. this is a hot favourite for a Golden Point. Is there a bit of rain about as well this it's weekend? It's been raining today. Maybe? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's meant to be hot Sunday. Actually, I should check the weather. When we get to the Tigers game, I'll check the weather. Uh, for Saturday, not that it'll be right, but uh, Cowboys... Dragons at Netstrata Jubilee State. Is that Cogra? Netstrata Jubilee State. Yeah, that, yeah. that's Cogra. Um, I've gone Dragons. They're three dollars outsiders. What have I missed here? Why Dra? I know they suck, but they're at home. Three like three dollars is a. If you're getting up above three dollars. Like it's a heavy outsider. Like I feel like playing at home. Is is Ben Hunt playing? I didn't check the yeah, team list. Yeah, ben, Hunt, ben Hunt's playing. I, I just yeah. think because the Cowboys are undefeated. But honestly, the Cowboys out of Queensland don't normally beat up teams. Yeah, so, that's yeah, what again, I thought. This, this should be another close game. I mean, Saints obviously got smashed by the Dolphins last week, and they've, they've made a couple of changes. I think they've put DeBellin in the front row, and they've brought uh, Luch Leilua into the starting team. And obviously, the Cowboys are missing Lukey, um, who's out, and they've replaced him with, with another young, budding second rower there. So... I don't know. It could go either way. I've got no confidence in this game as well, but I went the Cowboys. Flano uh, looks like he was absolutely dreaming in that game, eh? Hey? Yeah, Fl- Flano's not going to take crap, and yeah, he's he's good like that. He'll he'll squeeze the most out of the Dragons that, that he possibly can. As would you say then? Um, the ca- yeah, even though the Cowboys had a close one against the Knights last week, I th- I think they're looking just a little bit too good, um, and they'll they'll want to pick up. Uh, pick the pace back up again, obviously winning in golden point where you probably shouldn't have been that close to losing mm. at all. Probably would have hurt them a little bit. And I'm at the point now where the dragons cost me a perfect round last week and I just can't bloody <laughs> trust them anymore this year. So I'm, I'm highly unlikely to pick the dragons ever again this year, unless maybe they're playing us or the dolphins again, if they're out, if either team is well and truly out of form, but yeah, I don't, I don't see me, myself picking the dragons again this year. Uh, right. On to, the game of the round, Tigers, Sharkies. I've gone. I'm backing the boys. I just thought they're four dollars twenty to win this one. Like heart, fa- like like heart factor. I don't know when I did my tips this week. I must look. I don't drink. I very rarely drink. I wasn't drunk when I did my tips, but I've drink. <laughs> I've tipped. I've I've even put a multi on today. Dogs, Dragons, and Tigers to all win. It's paying about twelve bucks or something. I put five bucks on that um, to get up. I don't know. Like heart. I'm feeling it. Going with hope. They'll probably. I'll probably be wrong on this, but I don't know. I feel like the boys are gonna lift at Leichhardt. They're not gonna they're not at least not gonna look as bad as they did in Canberra. So yeah, Gussie, it's not an optical illusion that you can see on the screen. I did tip the Tigers <laughs> this week. So uh Michael, obviously what what are your predictions for the game on Saturday? I think it'll go similarly to the game we just had with the Bulldogs, it'll be a sort of a tight first half, maybe six, six all, 10 six one way, and second half Cronulla will pull away. I don't, it won't, I don't think it'd be like a, a massive flogging or whatever. I think maybe sort of 24 12 or something like that. Like Cronulla is very stout in defense at the moment, and I don't think Tigers at this stage of their sort of season have enough to, to unlock that. So, yeah, we'll probably win sort of four tries, five tries to two, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I really hope better. I really hope that um, Benji or Appy or someone talks to the rest of the team about what it means to play at Leichhardt Oval as a Tiger. Um, obviously, hopefully they're coming out to a packed Roaring Hill um, and just the atmosphere there as mm. the home team instead of obviously a lot of players who've played their away, I think. Olam may have played there away, but I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, I, I just hope Benji or whoever just gives the team a lift about being a Tiger, playing it like. Oh, a, you guys will be well up for it. First half, yeah, certainly we, well up for it. We we need like it's. I'm happy for Benji to be calm in the coach's box, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but you know, we don't need. You know, I don't know what happened in Canberra, man, but it was like someone saying kumbaya my lord to them before they ran out like there was no <laughs> there was no fire in the belly i want i want to see an absolutely bloody revved up team and i'm telling you now we're going to rev them up before they come out they got to like just 
really freaking want this and it just can't be every second week they've got to come out with that mentality every week you're wearing a west tigers jersey put some pride in it if you lose just don't lose it in the first 15 minutes like you did the other day they look like pussy cats they need to come out with intent with with belief and if they don't they'll get walloped you know so yeah if, it's a if, voice. if we get a jump on you guys it could get real ugly mm. um Go because then first. we'll just be zinging it around. But, uh, yeah, if you, you guys need to come out and score first and put the pressure on and, you know, exactly. get us to make a couple of mistakes and that kind of thing and really get into the contest with the crowd. Because if, if we take it out of it after five minutes, then we'll just sort of run around and score sick tries and, yeah, be, yeah a bit sad. Just looking at the weather, it's meant to be sunny in high 20s all weekend. So it should be, yeah, good, good, um, good footy weather Saturday night. So buy a ticket. Yeah, get out there or try and win one on NG Pumps or West Ashfield's Instagram pages. Fill the hill, fill the stands. Fingers crossed we can get 13, 14,000 for this one at least. Shut the gates. Yeah, Sharkies usually have a decent contingent of fans that travel as well. So it should be should be a decent crowd. Um, yeah, there, right. Eels, we've all tipped the Eels up against. Manly. Uh, Manly, which Manly. sounds crazy. Yeah, that's a combat. I They're at home. That's the only reason I tipped them. Same reason I, I tipped Manly last week. Yeah, that's the exact same thing I've gone with as well. Mm. Yeah, this, this could go Manly's way as well. Power have got some issues in the back line. They've got a new centre. They've shift, shifted Morgan Harper out to the wing. And our old mate, Tom, Del, Tom Talau, who replaced Jason Saab last week, he's out as well. And they got that. Big unit, RVS, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but um, he, he's on the wing there. He's, he could be a little bit of a liability. Good, good, solid player, but he's just got no speed. So maybe... RVS. Pa- Sounds like a yeah. Chrysler forward drive. The yeah, RVS. maybe, maybe Parra can take it. Raymond, to Raymond Tuomealo Vaiga, I think is... That's him, R- RTV. Oh, yeah. RT, RTV, yeah. RTV, I've got, got the wrong acronym going. <laughs> um, any opinions on this one, Michael? Um, I'm going to tip Manly. Okay. Based on Manly beat Parramatta. They just beat him. So I think, I think the, the start that they've had is really, you know, they'll be buoyed by that. You know, Turbo, they've still got Turbo in the side playing well, not mm-hmm. injured. So as long as he's there and Cherry's there and they're, you know, feeling it, they're going to win those games. Brooksy, Brooksy likes Combank. Uh, dollar eighty dollar eighty six man like it's pretty almost even money dollar eighty six yeah. eels at dollar ninety eight uh, just so many fifty fifty games it's crazy mm. so similar hard. to the ne- next games the, the knights are favourite to beat the storm again Newcastle at Newcastle I know they look um actually they looked all right they lost in Golden Point didn't they to the, the Cowboys. Cowboys. Had a big Look, the Storm. It's 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 hard. My policy usually is always tip the Storm, but I don't know. Newcastle in Newcastle. Storm still haven't picked Sean Bloor in first grade, so fuck them. Go the Knights. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got to win, right? The Knights. Oh, and three. They'll be bad start. Yeah, yeah well, they're gonna be desperate. Jacko, surely. They've dropped Jacko Hastings for uh, Colga and. Uh, their star winger Marju is out, so uh, it's going to be interesting there. But obviously, uh, the Storm are missing uh, Jerome Hughes this week, who's replaced by Wishart. So they got a big positional change in the halves there. Mm. Another coast, another coasty in the halves. Cogger with uh, Nico as well. Um, right, that does the eight games. Any other opinions anyone's got on rugby league before we get in to lower grades? Yeah, just, just keep an eye out in our game with Cronulla. Just keep an eye out for this bloke that doesn't look like he's a beast, but he is a beast, Hazelton. He, he goes good, and he, and he seems to find the try line too. So uh, just he's keep an dead. eye I love him. Yeah, yeah he's amazing, and, he, and he, he's good value for a try scorer too. So just keep your eyes out on him, not just for our game, but I'm just saying for, for other games. He, yeah, he knows how to find the line. Good player. Uh, lower grades this week. So... The Magpies, Harold Matts, and the girls, I believe, are at Kirkham Oval in Camden. The Balmain, Harold Matts, for some reason, so they're both 
both our main teams are playing against Manly. The Harold Matt side are playing at Brookvale, but the SG Ball side is pre-game to NRL. So I don't know why they're at different um, grounds, but yeah, there you go. So SG Ball, Balmain, they play Manly at 3.10 p.m. I can't, can barely read my screen there. I think it's 3.10 p.m. Check the New South Wales RL website slash app. And the New South Wales Cup are playing at Lidcombe Oval on Sunday. I don't know why they can't play this at Lockhart Oval before the main game. So they're playing Newtown Jet. I, maybe because it's the Tommy Rodonicus Cup or something, but I don't know. It's a, why can't we get more grade games, before, uh, more cup games before grade? It's, I don't get it. Don't understand it. I don't know why. I need it. I need someone smarter than me and more powerful than me more powerful than me to um answer that one but I agree yeah. I don't remember a game ever having an SG ball game as the only pre-game like it's I've never heard of that happening weird anyway uh Jersey flag they're playing at Lincoln Oval so they're before cup so it's like it's uh flag and cup on Sunday at uh, Lickham Oval. Get out to Lickham Oval and support the lower grade boys. I would if I wasn't heading to the Easter show with my family on Sunday. Uh, what else we got? So, yeah, the girls are at Kirkham Oval. So Lisa Fiola Ola are at 10 a.m. and 11.30 for Tasha Gale. And good luck to the Andrew Johns Cup boys. They're playing the grand final. They're playing against the Central Coast side at... Uh, up in Necknock, Cessnock, uh, at on Sunday in at ten thirty a.m. in the morning. Uh, Cessnock Oval was the last ground I ever played a game of rugby league against. Played against the Cessnock Goannas. Um, funny enough, and that does it. Right on to Patreon. Um, God, we're running like long again, but we will get to. We promise the Patreon guys that we get to their questions. Uh, slash rant. So Shane Coet, he said, hi guys, yesterday's game, obviously he wrote this uh, on Sunday, was what I expected. It's only only early, but it seems we haven't fixed what's been our bugbear for years. Attack, we're still way too predictable in opposition 20. We're just too clunky and slow. What have they been doing on the off season? We had no chases on our fifth tackle kicks. I'd bring Lob in just for that alone. One more thing, Biller... Buller is good and I love him, but he is just too slow. Or do you think he's holding back and returning the ball? He seems very pedestrian compared to a lot of ball runners. He needs to run harder. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think Ball is a bit soft on the run back? He seems, I don't know, he seems to be, he's, he reminds me very much of David Peachy, the way he kind of, that long, gangly sort of um, long strides. I don't know, Michael, being a Sharks fan, does Buller give you peachy vibes at all? Um, not yet, because he's like he's he's sort of new, right? Um, I'm not saying he doesn't yeah, have peach, he doesn't peachy, have this. Or, he's a, what he is. He's a, he's a good quality player who you know for that first try that you guys scored on the weekend. You know, you wanted your fullback there, and he was there, and he delivered mm. that pass, and he did it properly, and like. There's a few fullbacks in the league that would that they'd blow that, but he's there, he's doing it. I mean, running it back hard. I mean, yeah, sure. Um, you want you want you want those, those those spine players to be there at the pointing end where it matters, and yeah, sure. He could. I don't know. I mean, mostly don't. I mean, mostly our guys. I mean, Kennedy does run it back sometimes, but he just sort of you know. Passes to to Ronnie or Katoa or Talakai, and the, those those other bigger bodies take it up anyway. So I don't know. You, you want him? You want him fresh for for the the, the good ball. He, he's not fast, but he glides. I think glides is the right way to describe how he runs. But look, he's he's very much in the Gutho mold in the sense that he's not he's not fast, but his anticipation between the years is second to none. And that's why he just seems to be in the right place at the right time. And then guys, he hasn't even had a full season yet, you know, so like let's give him time to develop and, and work on, on everything. But yeah, we, we've got a good one at fullback. 
Shane's in the comments. So he looks like he's never going to break a tackle. I, I, I don't know. I feel like he looks like looks dangerous when he's running. Maybe not when he's running back off a kick, but I don't know. I feel like there's always a chance of something being on yeah. when he's got the ball. He, what he's got is that sort of when he has the ball, something cool could happen. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what he's got. Like whether he's fast or whatever. Like I would say Kennedy is not the fastest dude either. But when he gets the ball, he has really nice hands and he knows where to be. And so good stuff invariably happens around him. So, yeah, I sort of, you know, I think there's a big future for Bohr. And, yeah. I'll, of course, remember Kennedy's dad, Bubba, playing for the Tigers yeah. as well back in the day. Uh, local Looney, he said, for me, the game on the weekend highlighted all of our concerns that we had in the preseason. Our outside backs are the worst in the comp, and we are seriously struggling for quality in the lock position. What we're seeing now is a result of the poor leadership the club was under for many years, and change isn't going to happen overnight. Um, 100%. I don't think he's, yeah, I don't think he's wrong on that one. Righto, next episode, we'll review this game Monday night at 8 30. Oh, I didn't do, hang on, Super Chats. I uh, saw Gussie. Gussie said, let's go Fitzy. And he said, if 44 points are to be scored in the next game, how would you distribute all the points? Also, I heard the West Tigers non-ticketed membership is $75. Uh, I, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I always get ticketed memberships, but you might as well get one with tickets. Surely, if you're going to pay 75 bucks, I think you can. Do they still do the Flexi membership as? Where you just get uh, 18? No, I don't think so. Not, okay. not, the, not at the moment. That sucks because I understand why people can't prioritize like a, def, a definite game and so many, um, yeah, like to prioritize a game that's later in the year, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's 75 bucks. Support the team. Yeah. Get a, get a membership uh, if you can. Uh, yeah, thanks to Mick Fitz for signing up to become a YouTube member as well. And thank you to the hundreds of you that tuned in live tonight. Thank you to the thousands of you that tune in every single episode twice a week. Um, it's going to be in the thick of the season. We'll review this one on Monday. And a big thank you to Michael making your debut. We didn't have – I was thinking, trying to think before who we had for the Sharks last year, but I was in Fiji when we uh, – got smacked by the Sharkies last year, so we didn't actually have a guest on uh, for that game. We only played the Sharks once last year, didn't we? Um, yeah, we did. I yeah, don't I think, think so. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's why it was Sean Bloor's try. Fuck. The Sean Bloor's try that I missed. Oh, Combank. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, we weren't playing particularly well then. You still beat us. You still won. Yeah, it was sort of like a frustrating, like, you guys probably should have got, you got ripped off a bit. We were sort of in the mud, not not beating a team well when we sort of, you know, had talked it up all week. So, yeah. Yeah, it was only a matter of time before we lost Josh Aaron because we saw his picture disappear. And yeah. I thought, when, when's he going to, he'll be back on in about probably 10 seconds or so. But, uh yeah, I think it was that was the night you guys won like thirty six eighteen or something like that. It was we were we were in the we we're in the contest. And I think we had a disallowed try from a bomb. You you and, had and, a very sort of like it was probably disallowed, but it was it was one of those ones where when you're trying to win and when you're you know the in, quote unquote the low team, that kind of bad luck only ever happens on that side of the ledger. You know, yeah. like I think it was Tom's last memory early second half. Oh, and then you had a piece of play That's where you did right, yeah. cool kick to the sideline and the winger missed it by that much. And yes. that could have been, you know. Yeah, it could have changed the game. Yeah. Mm. I remember that too because at that point I think it might have been 12 all or pretty close to it. And then we had 70 put, put on us the next week by the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, don't remind, don't remind us. Yeah, we probably will when we preview the Cowboys game <laughs> later, later and whenever we play them. Later in the year, but yeah, thank you, Michael, for yeah representing the Sharkies. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having tonight. me. And I uh, just want to say, uh, well, I think it's really good that West have sort of got out from under the sort of leadership that they did, um, and had have Richo come in. Like Richo is a 
he's been really good in rugby league for a long time. He was really good at the Sharks, so he's going to do your club well. But I also like that you guys managed to do it without having, like, four corners show up to your club like Cronulla did, you know. So <laughs> do, it, do it without mass controversy, always better. Yeah, yeah. I would. Well, we were huge fans. I don't know if you know about our show, but we were huge fans of Lee and Justin. Michael. Oh, yeah, massive, you know, <laughs> you know quality. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great leadership. Yeah. Mate, there's nothing like having four footy general managers in 30 months so you can <laughs> t- totally screw up your roster. We've had, we've had oh, Hardy, Ken, Hardy Ken Sheens, McDonnell, and uh, who was the last bloke? Fulton, all within two and a half years. And you wonder yeah. why we can't find a replacement for Safe Half. Well, I like that Sheens had the job and then decided, I'm the man to coach. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I actually don't think it's his idea, sadly. It was it was B1 what? and B2. Oh, that's, well, that's even worse because yeah. then he's sort of penned in to do this job that he doesn't even want to do. Oh, well, Richo will fix it, mate. It's going to take time, but Richo will fix it. Yeah, he will. He's good. He's a really smart guy. And, you know, I mean, he, he's, he goes all the way back to, like, Johnny Lang and coming down to work at the Sharks on the smell of an oily rag during Super League and stuff. So he... Yeah, you know he's been around, and he will he will lead you to better things. And Rico, we trust. Righto, we'll review this game on Monday night. So we'll see you everyone Monday night, eight thirty, live on the YouTube channel. So yeah, head to our YouTube channel if you're listening to this on audio. So give us a subscribe. We really want to get it up towards. We're creeping up towards nine hundred ish. We want to try and crack that thousand mark by the end of the year so even if you don't even use youtube create an account subscribe get our numbers up for us help us with our algorithm the shouts to uh might give a shout out to the haters too that always put in negative comments on our youtube as well your comments are just helping with the algorithm and for our show to go into more people's feeds so um a big thank you to all of you (laughs) yeah you and you can tell me after the show I don't know what they are. Well, one of them, one of them had to go. My reading, uh, how poor my reading is, and that was like late in the show. So you'd obviously listen to the entire show. So you're getting our listener, uh, average listener minutes up as well. So shouts to you if you're listening to the whole game and then leaving a comment about how shit my reading is. So um, shouts to the haters. Shouts to our thousands of lovers. Look, when you fish, when you're casting a wide net, and you've got thousands of people who love you. You're gonna get catch a few boots and shit in the ocean as well so love you all see you on monday evening i'll see you two fellas uh on saturday at leichhardt oval in the latcham robinson stand come and say good day to us if you see us out there we'll chat footy with yeah love hearing from you all and as always go the tigers go the tigers go the tigers Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast.